Number 42. Polymers are large molecules composed of simple units repeated many times. Thus, they often have relatively simple empirical formulas. Calculate the empirical formulas of the following polymers. And then we have letter C. So in this case, we have to find the empirical formula for polyethylene, which is 86% carbon and 14% hydrogen. So we've done tons of problems, right? We know how to do an empirical formula from a percent composition. If you guys are on the playlist and viewed, you know, the previous questions, we got this. But for all of you that have it, right, we have a simple four-step process, which is this one. So I can start at percentages and go all the way to an empirical formula by just doing four steps. Now, to put this into context, what is polyethylene? This is all of your packaging plastics. So, for example, all the plastic bags, that's polyethylene. It's just one simple formula repeated thousands and millions of times to get out your plastic bag. But it's just one compound. We just have to find out what that empirical compound is, the most simplified compound. Now, we have to start with the percents. So we're going to just start from there. They tell us that polyethylene is 86, and maybe I'll put it over here, 86, oh, actually just 86, 86% 86 carbon and 14% hydrogen. So we're only dealing with two compounds, uh, two elements here, carbon and hydrogen. So the first thing is, how do I go from a percentage to a gram value? Well, the total amount, the highest percentage of something is always 100%, right? And Technically, we should add these two together just to make sure that we don't have any uh, percentages that we're not accounting for here. But 86 plus 14 is 100 percent, so everything is accounted for here. Now, just know that just like the total percentage is out of 100 percent, I could assume that the gram sample that I have is also a total of 100 grams. This would mean that the percentage and the gram values are actually equal because the totals are equal. So I can say, well, I have 86% carbon, but I really have 86 grams of carbon. I have 14% hydrogen. I really have 14 grams of hydrogen. And 86 plus 14 grams is 100 gram sample. So the first part is easy. Now I have to go from those grams to finding the moles. Remember guys, whenever we're converting from a gram value to its mole value, we've done tons of problems like this, we just use a ratio, right? We use that converting factor. So for each one of these, and maybe I'll bring this a little bit downward just so I have more room, you're going to be taking your number and multiplying it by some conversion factor, AKA a ratio. So I'm just gonna do the same thing here. And remember, whatever unit you don't want, in this case, we don't want grams, right? Specifically grams. You put that unit on the opposite side. So grams of carbon will go on the bottom. And the same thing for the grams of the hydrogen. I don't want that anymore, so that goes on the bottom. The unit that I want, however, is the one that goes in the numerator, okay, on the top, and the unit that I want is moles. So this would be mole of carbon, and this would be mole of hydrogen. But now, what are the numbers that go in the numerator and in the denominator? That comes from the periodic table, the mass numbers, which are the decimal values on the periodic table. Remember that the 1.008 and the 12.01, those are gram values. These equal one mole of the element, one mole, one mole. If you're using the mass on the periodic table, your moles in your conversion factor will always be one, okay? And the number that you see here goes with the grams. So for carbon, I have one mole of carbon and that equals 12.01 grams. I have one mole of hydrogen and that equals 1.008 grams of, hy of hydrogen. The grams will cancel and you're now left with the unit that you want, which is the moles. So we're making progress. Now we just gotta find out what that number is. 
So we just divide, right? The 12.01's in the denominator, so that's division. 86 divided by 12.01, I get, I'm just going to cut it off after a few decimals, so 7.161 mole of carbon, and then I'll do 14 divided by 1.008, I get, yeah, basically 14. 13.889, and that's mole of hydrogen. And now we have finished halfway. We finished two out of the four steps. Now, how do I go from a mole value to a mole ratio? Well, we kind of just talked about what a ratio was. A ratio is a fraction. You're dividing something over something else. So I have the starting numbers. I just need to know what I'm going to be dividing them by, right? 7.161 divided by a number so that I have a ratio. And then the same thing for the hydrogen. I'm going to take this number and divide it by something to get a ratio. But now think of what empirical formulas are. It's the simple, the most simple formula, right? The lowest number of coefficient uh, subscripts possible, right? So keep that idea in mind. If we're trying to find the most simplified formula with the lowest number of subscripts, you're always going to be dividing by the lowest mole value. So you have to look, I have 7.161 and 13.889, looks like this number is the lowest one. So I'm going to divide each number by 7.161. Now once I find out these values, I should get a whole number. And we see that here, right? This cancels out, so I just have one mole of carbon. And now let's see, 13.889 divided by 7.161. I get roughly 1.94, but that's very, very, very close to 2 moles of hydrogen. And now since I have whole numbers for both of them, I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm ready to get my empirical formula. The empirical formula is just taking the numbers that you just found out, the whole numbers, and putting them together. Doesn't matter which element you say first. I'll just say, you know, I'll go from top to bottom. So in this case, I have carbon, and I have one of them. You could put the one. You don't have to. And then I have hydrogen, but I have two of them. So I do have to put that subscript down there. And that's it. I have carbon. I have hydrogen. That is my empirical formula. With a 1 and a 2 subscript, you can't simplify that anymore. So that's the final answer. Woohoo! What do you think, guys? This one was fun. Pretty simple. I hope I'm giving you good help. All right? Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, subscribe to the channel. That will help us out. Thank you so much for that. And, yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome day. And... Keep studying hard and do well on those tests and quizzes, okay? I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.